Since the beginning of the Understanding Israel series, I have been trying to bring about an important understanding to our faith. We have been so conditioned and indoctrinated to understand our faith from a vantage point of Gentiles and hijackers. We have been so relaxed in the pursuit of growth in regards to knowledge and understanding of our faith that we don't read the scriptures, and if we do, we only read the parts in which already confirm what we think we know. And the Understanding Israel series was made in order to bring about an important understanding that we are to read the scriptures not from a Christian mindset, but a Hebrew one. Now, let me be clear, because when I say that, that might throw you off. That does not mean that everyone in the world needs to become Hebrews and speak Hebrew and be a Hebrew. That's not what that means when I say read from a Hebrew mindset. The scriptures were written about, they were written to, and they were written by Hebrews. So if you're going to understand this book that we call the Bible, if you come into understanding of it through the eyes of an American or the eyes of a Christian, you are bringing in your already predisposed thoughts and understandings of what the Most High desires. You cannot understand this book if you ignore the people that it was written to and about. Now, in that Understanding Israel series, I continuously said that as I moved throughout that series, I did not want to focus on the lies, but focus on the truth. And throughout that series, as certain topics have been brought up and many different points were made, there were many different questions that were aroused. The main one being, who are the people in the land of Israel right now if the claims that I am making are valid? That is the main question. And though I desired to answer that question early on, Yah did not allow me at that time to do that because there were more important things he wanted me to discuss and explain. He told me and guided me to focus on the truth. And after that foundation is laid, then we can start exposing the lies. The time has come where lies and falsehoods can be exposed, but I am not tying it to the Understanding Israel series. The problem that most believers in this world face is that they have been exposed to the faith by liars and hijackers. And because of these frauds, the foundation of the truth and understanding of Yah has not been fully seen and accepted. Satan is keeping the majority of the world deceived, and it's time for you, if you truly love Yah, to come out of the lies. So we're going to start a new series dealing with the hijackers. Now, as we grow through history, the amounts of frauds and hijackers multiply. So what we must do is start first at the foundation of the lie, and then we will work our way out. Like, we can't deal with the lies from the Protestant Reformation or the falsehoods in the American Christian denominations without understanding the foundation of all those lies. None of these topics are separate from each other. Well, maybe when speaking about the current ones who the world wants to say are the true recipients of Yah's promises. That's an independent lie that we must get to. But we must start at the beginning first, and that starts with the Roman Catholic Church. I have covered this in a few different videos, but I want to make sure that I bring this out and make it easy to see and understand. Most people don't recognize that even though they are not Catholics and don't follow the doctrine of the Catholics, that most of their doctrine has been influenced by the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church invented Christianity. To be clear, when I say that, I mean what we know as Christianity today. The influence of the Roman Catholic Church must be examined and dealt with if you truly want to serve Yah so this will be the first hijacker that we discuss. Let's begin. Okay, so this is really important to understand. You may not know this, but the Roman Catholic Church is a major influence in Christian doctrine. And though through history, there have been splits and reforms and other groups that took the leading influence of the doctrine that you may hold on to right now, it must be understood that the Roman Catholic Church was the foundation of it and their influence is always found tucked away into the faith of Christianity, regardless of your denomination. The faith that you hold today must remove the falsehoods and foundational errors from the Roman Catholic Church, and that's what I'm going to discuss today. It's important to understand what happened as the Roman Catholic Church began. It should be understood that the Roman Catholic Church did not grow because there was an overwhelming love of Yah and they were so compelled because of Messiah's resurrection. I mean, at this point of time in history of Yahusha raising from the dead, with him doing it with Lazarus too, you can understand the amount of chatter that must have spread in regards of him around the known world. 
but it's not as if people all of a sudden started gravitating to him and believing in him. That is not the case. And it took Rome 300 years after Messiah's death for them to choose Christianity as the religion over the empire. 300 years. I've spoken enough about the history of Rome and Constantine that brought Christianity into the empire. If you ever read anything about the conversion of Rome and Constantine, you will read that many different authors have long been divided about Constantine's religious beliefs at the time of his victory and control over Rome. Some have regarded him simply as a political opportunist without religious conviction who sought to win the Christians to his side to strengthen his hold on the empire. Others have seen him as a religious syncretist. Remember, syncretism is the practice of combining different beliefs. It involves merging or assimilating different religious beliefs. The other side that believes he was a religious syncretist believed he recognized all religions, again, to strengthen political power. But it should be noted that through this divide, no one says that Constantine made Rome a Christian empire because of his love of the God of the Hebrews and his belief in the Messiah that was sent to him. That was never part of his motives. So let us be clear. What we are talking about is that since the beginning, the foundation of the Roman Catholic Church was not established because Yahuwah gave the keys of the church to Rome. Constantine was the beginning of the Roman Catholic Church. Eusebius tells of a vision seen by Constantine in which the sign of the cross appeared in the sky with the legend saying, In hoc signu vene, or in this sign thou shalt conquer. This was the cross. And from this vision that Constantine had, the world changes. The Roman Catholic Church conquered the world through the cross. In this sign thou shalt conquer goes against the whole purpose of Yahusha and is contradictory to the many teachings Yahusha himself has told us about the coming of the kingdom of Yah. He did not want the world to be conquered through this sign, and he did not want nor need man to conquer the world for him. Yahusha did not grow his church through physical power or forced conversion. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 33, Yahusha says, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. Think about a woman baking bread. She kneads the dough and then puts it away until later the yeast has raised the dough tremendously. Yahusha is saying that this is how the kingdom of heaven is. The leaven or yeast will grow internally through its own power, which in the case of the kingdom of heaven is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of heaven, those of us who will inherit it, are growing the numbers in the kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is not by forced conversion or requirement to be a part of the church as the Roman Catholic Church did and how we saw Constantine took that vision of the cross to me. You have to understand that the foundation that the Roman Catholic Church built their faith on was tainted. It was a political move to bring back control over Rome. It was a practice of religious syncretism. It merged Rome's already pagan beliefs with that of what the apostles have spread in the faith of Yah. The Romans took control over the faith in Yah. And like I have said many times, this is the beginning of when Satan planted the tares. If you do not recognize this, then you need to truly re-examine your faith. If you read the scriptures, anytime Yah has given people power and direction to proclaim his way, he speaks with them and directs them personally. And one way that we know that he is doing this is because he directs them to be holy, set apart. He does not give a strategy to just mention him so you can win over the hearts of the people. He desires that all come to him in spirit and in truth. He did not need Rome to convert his faith. Satan needed Rome to do so because the influence of the apostles were growing and the more that these early followers of the way were persecuted but did not resist, the more people flocked and gravitated to them. So Satan hijacked the faith. Now, let me be clear. I am not saying that at the time of Rome's conversion and before, there were not true believers amongst the Roman Empire. I am just saying that history is not telling their story. When understanding the history of the church and the history of the assembly of Yahusha, there must be understanding that takes place there. 
So let me illustrate this to you by using our current times as an example. Today, there are believers in Yahusha who actually follow his words, they stay on the narrow path, and they reject the influence that the world has tried to have on the faith, many of whom watch these videos and support this channel. There is a true remnant of the Messiah, the true bride that actually places Yahuwah's will as a priority over everything else. This is the true church, the true assembly, those that truly follow and practice the way. Now there also is a very general brand of Christianity. This can include many different denominations and the very liberal churches that integrate the world into their way of worship. Now the world views it as all the same. When historians been talk about it, it is all the same to them. Very generally as Christians, those who believe in Jesus. The writers of history do not make the distinction between the true and the false, the wheat and the tares. If this history of today was written, you would not see us, the true bride, those that follow the way and reject the ways of this world, you would not see us separated in history and spoken about unless there was a major event that clearly separated us from the general view of the church, maybe like with the solution they gave out. And later on, there will definitely be division when us true believers do not accept the new world system that they're building. But what I'm saying is, if someone was writing history, we would not be in the history right now. But we still were here and were very important to the faith. History would just talk about the general faith of Christianity and separate it maybe by denominations. Does that make sense? So if you want to question whether there were true conversions and were there truly those of the faith and where did they go, I cannot say for certain because historians have not documented this. They have not separated that. What we are dealing with are the hijackers, because as I have explained earlier, these are the main influences of the faith today. And if you don't understand how that influence has affected you, then you don't understand the true faith of the Hebrews who Messiah came to. Yahusha did not come to the Romans. He did not come to England or America and start his assembly. He came to the Hebrews, and this is the basis where you must understand him from. And so before we deal with the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church, it's important to understand these foundational points. The first one I just explained, that when Constantine started the Church of Rome, it was a political decision mixed with the practice of syncretism, which again is the merging or assimilation of different faiths and beliefs. He merged Rome's already pagan beliefs with the faith of the Hebrews. The second point to understand is that Rome made sure that they removed any influence of the Hebrews in this newfound faith. The first followers of the way were Yahudim, whom the world calls Jews, and those of the scattered ten tribes who were considered Gentiles by the Yahudim. The scattered of Israel, they were sent all around Asia Minor, and they were considered Greeks or Gentiles because a lot of them started following the ways of the heathens instead of going back to the Torah. So the Yahudim considered them Greeks or Gentiles. Also amongst those who were the first to follow the way were those who sympathized with the Yahudim. By the early fourth century, Christianity became a permitted religion, just like the religion of the Yahudim was permitted in Rome. And this influence of the way took so much influence away from the pagan ways that again, Constantine made Christianity the favored religion, and it was now paganism that was just merely tolerated. And after this decision, Rome's attitude towards the Yahudim changed. The faith was hijacked from this point. There was a complete hijacking of leadership of the faith. From the beginning, the pagans started mingling their belief in with the truth of Yah, and in order to do this, they wanted to remove the influence of the Yahudim. The Council of the Churchmen, which met at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, met to discuss the faith, and among many other agendas, they sought to separate the Jews, the Yahudim, from the Christians. They forbade Christians to eat unleavened bread on Passover, or to even celebrate this holiday at the same time as the Yahudim. They prohibited Christians from visiting synagogues and listening to any Jews preaching or teaching. It urged them not to observe the day of rest on the day that the Jews observed and instituted Sunday as the only Christian Sabbath. 
the bishops grew in influence and began to take away from the Yahudim some of the political privileges they once long enjoyed. Many of the Christian leadership of Rome urged the emperor to deal harshly with the Yahudim. They desired that the influence of the Yahudim disappear. They made the claim that the Jews had always misunderstood the scriptures. They pointed to the loss of their nation of Israel as a sign that Yah had rejected and abandoned the Jews, and they were now the holders of the covenant. So this faith of Rome that was started more from a political decision also did not want any influence from the ones who were actually in covenant with Yah. Rome did not want their help to bring about Yah's truth and his kingdom and show what it was like to live under a covenant with the Most High. So the faith that was created from Rome was a faith that was started from the minds and understandings of the Romans, and they rejected any influence from the Yahudim, the ones that Yahusha actually came to. And so it is highly important that you recognize this foundation because it still holds true to this day. For the many that want to say, I'm not Catholic, I'm not influenced by the Roman Catholic Church, let's look at what the foundation of the church did and what you do now. As I said, the churchmen of the Council of Nicaea, among other agendas, sought to separate the Yahudim from the Christians. They sought to separate the Jews from the Christians, so they forbade them to eat unleavened bread on Passover or even to celebrate this holiday at the same time as the Yahudim. It was at this event that they set the time of Easter, which went along with their pagan fertility festival. This is syncretism. But what they did was made Christianity separate from the ways of the Yahudim. So this is why the practice and celebration of Passover is not found within Christianity today. And this is why they look at it as just a practice that the Jews keep, and they celebrate their Messiah at a completely different time. This was from the foundation that Rome established. All of you that just celebrated Easter and ignored Passover, you did this because you were influenced by the foundation that the Roman Catholic Church established. That's the foundation. They also prohibited Christians from visiting synagogues and listening to any Yahudim preaching or teaching. Now, I can't say I'm not happy about this part today because of who people believe are Jews. Then the separation from that influence, it's a good thing. But understand that as history went along, because of this separation, there was no care for the chosen people of Yah. It is exactly how the persecutions, the inquisitions, and the complete rejection of the Yahudim was allowed. The Roman church made a complete separation from the Yahudim. Instead of understanding that all who come into faith of Messiah are grafted into Yasharel. I spoke about this in the video before this when dealing with replacement theology. This is where that doctrine started. And this is why people don't recognize that they are Yasharel and they must live set apart lives like Yasharel was commanded to. Also in the foundation of Christianity, it urged them to not observe the day of rest on the day the Yahudim observed and instituted Sunday as the only Christian Sabbath. So it changed the day of rest to the first day of the week instead of the seventh day. The calendar that we use today is not a Hebrew calendar. And therefore, because they changed the times, we are now trying to gain better understanding of the calculation of the times. And there is no shortage of opinions on this topic. And I don't honestly get into the debates. In regards to this, just understand that right now the world uses the Roman Gregorian calendar. And they clearly show Sunday as the first day of the week and Saturday as the seventh. So clearly, when they changed the Sabbath to Sunday, they made Christianity observe the first day of the week as the day of rest, completely contradictory of the scriptures. Most people don't even know that the reason why they go to church on Sundays is because the foundation that the Roman Catholic Church set. So for those who practice this, please don't say that you do this because of scripture. We know to justify what you're doing, we know that everyone likes to use the scripture from Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. It will be wise for people to not isolate scripture and then justify themselves. This scripture never said that they changed the Sabbath day to the first day of the week. It just said that they met together and broke bread. So be clear, no one is talking against meeting together on the first day of the week. You should meet together whenever you can. 
But you need to be real with yourself here when trying to use that justification. That is not actually what happened. And it is not why church services are on Sunday. They are on Sunday because this comes from the foundation that the Roman Catholic Church set thousands of years ago. This is a foundation. You are just trying to find a way to justify it. But please understand that it's not just about meeting, but they changed the day of the Sabbath. And because they separated the Yahudim from the church, the whole practice of resting on the Sabbath is lost. And most people argue against the Sabbath, even though they don't recognize that they practice Rome Sabbath. The point that I am making and that I'm bringing up, and I hope that you see, is that the foundation that the Roman Catholic Church was built upon was far from solid ground. And because of this, so many people's faith is tainted, and they are not aware because they rely more on the traditions and teachings of men rather than the scriptures, even though they know that all scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Your faith must be planted in good ground. So, I hope you can understand that from the beginning of the Roman Catholic Church, the foundation was not sown on good ground. The Council of Nicaea was not about establishing sound doctrine for Yah's kingdom according to the scriptures. It was establishing doctrine that could unite Rome. This was the doctrine and everything that follows after is a consequence of this. So I hope that's made clear now. Let's dig in a little deeper. The Roman Catholic Church is also a keeper of many secrets. There are over 50 miles of shelving in the Vatican's secret archives, 35,000 volumes in the catalog alone. Much of it remains unavailable. A 75-year quarantine rule means that scholars have only recently had access to documents dating from World War II. They have all these records from thousands of years that only they, the Roman Catholic Church, have access to. They obviously are not open in regards to the truth. We only know what they want us to know. None of this is a foundation that Yahuwah has ever laid. Also, the history of the Roman church is one that is filled with violence and a way of movement that has nothing to do with the God of Yasharel. They promoted killing and wars in the name of Jesus. During the modern history of the world, since the start of the church, there were two institutions that went around conquering in the name of their God. This was the Roman Catholic Church and Islam. In regards to the Roman Catholic Church, there were holy wars. That's what they call them, but they were not holy. There were crusades. There were inquisitions. Godfrey de Bouillon, leader of the French in the official first crusade, vowed at one point that he wouldn't even begin his journey to the Holy Land until he avenged the blood of the crucified one with Jewish blood and completely destroyed anybody who bore the name of Yahudim, Jew. There was a slaughter of the Yahudim all over medieval Europe and the Roman Catholic Church worked tirelessly to get the Yahudim to denounce their ways and their culture and come into their church which is exactly what the Spanish Inquisition was all about. The history of the world for about 1,200 years from the start of the Roman Catholic Church to the times of the transatlantic slave trade were all about removing the influence and even remembrance of the true Yahudim. For instance, in the year 1215, the Roman Catholic Church's Fourth Lateran Council issued a series of decrees against the Yahudim. To begin with, the Yahudim were prohibited not allowed from employing Christians as servants. No Yahudim should have authority over any Christian. That's what it said. It stipulated that the Yahudim had to wear distinctive garb so that their presence should always be evident in the Christian communities. If you ever took the time to review the history of the Roman Catholic Church, you would see nothing but atrocities in the name of Jesus. But because of our education system and how we are made to understand the world today, People may understand that there are atrocities, but they don't truly recognize how this all ties in with our faith today. What I am sharing with you is that the foundation that the church was built upon was not from Yahuwah for his majesty, power, or glory. And over the centuries, their influence has spilled into our modern religion. When you go over the history, people don't like it when you mention Christianity and Catholics together. But if you have a problem with this, it's only because you have a problem with history and you don't clearly know it. 
Back during these times, there was no distinction between the Roman Catholic Church and Christianity. It's the same thing, tomato, tomato. The difference that you see and hold today is a modern difference after the Protestant Reformation, which was just another ploy that tried to separate Roman Catholicism from Christianity. But this was for modern day deception. Christianity should not be separated from Roman Catholicism because it was the Roman Catholic Church that established it. These are the tares that Satan planted in the same field Yahusha planted his good seed. And maybe in order to hold on to all your tradition and your mindsets that you have had all your life, you try to find a separation from it, but I suggest you stop lying to yourself and kidding yourself. The Roman Catholic Church is the first hijacker of the way. The true faith is the way, and the Roman Catholic Church hijacked the authority of it. And they have been the main representatives of the faith of Christianity. The only reason why your beliefs may differ is because Satan evolved his tactics for the new world and created more groups that was able to create more division, which is why we even have denominations. We have to get to understand all of that. The point I am making is that if you mix your faith found from the scriptures with the traditions of men, you are a Catholic, which simply means universal. You may call yourself a Christian, but your label does not matter. It's your doctrine and principles of faith that matters. You know how many people debate the celebration of pagan holidays like Christmas and Easter? And they say they can do traditions of men because they take Paul's epistle and ignore when he says, and listen, it's very clear, beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Messiah. That's Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. They ignore this, but then they hop down eight verses later and say, So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or new moon or Sabbaths. That's the same chapter, verse 16. And they use that scripture to justify traditions of men that Paul just warned of eight verses before. Do they think that Paul is contradicting himself? Obviously not. They're just not using context. And they do this because they are Catholic and they do not know it. It's because Catholics hold traditions equal with the scriptures. They place their traditions in the same authority as the word. We're going to review this by reviewing their catechisms. If you want to know the official position the Catholic Church takes on any particular doctrine, you can find it in their catechisms. A catechism is a summary of the principles of Christian religion in the form of questions and answers used for the instruction of Christians. This book contains the entire catechism of the Catholic Church, which was updated and first published in Latin in 1992 and published in the English version in 1994. It's the official statement of faith of the Roman Catholic Church. It is the Catholic Church's doctrinal statement. So let's read what they say. Tradition is equal with scripture. The Catholic Church places the Bible at an equal level as their tradition. Catechism number 80 on page 31 reads, Sacred tradition and sacred scripture then are bound closely together and communicate one with another. For both of them, flowing out from the same divine wellspring, come together in some fashion to form one thing and move towards the same goal. Each of them makes present and fruitful in the church the mystery of Christ, who promised to remain with his own always to the close of the age. Catechism 82 on page 31 reads, As a result, the church, to whom the transmission and interpretation of revelation is entrusted, does not derive her certainty about all revealed truths from the Holy Scriptures alone. Both scripture and tradition must be accepted and honored with equal sentiments of devotion and reverence. So they very clearly say that they do not derive their certainty from the Holy Scriptures alone. Case can be closed from that one statement. They do not depend on the word as the final authority. Let's keep going. If you don't read the Bible for yourself and you just go to church more to understand the scriptures and you read it for yourself, you are influenced by Catholics because their doctrine has been the main influence for lack of diligent of study of the word. This is what they promote. There are so many different forces at play that reduce the study of the scriptures. 
But the foundation set from the Catholic Church is why so many Christians do not read and believe that they need to go to a pastor to learn. Interpretation of the Bible is to be done only by the Pope and bishops. The Catholic Church teaches that only the elite can understand and should read the scriptures. Catechism 100 on page 35 reads, The task of interpreting the word of God authentically has been entrusted solely to the magisterium of the church, that is, to the pope and to the bishops in communion with him. The magisterium is the teaching authority of the Roman Catholic Church, especially as exercised by bishops or the pope, in case you didn't know what that word meant. Anyways, according to the Bible, this belief and teaching is completely false, but is used by them because it's how the Roman Catholic Church kept the power in the hands of the few and it's exactly why people believe the Bible was used as a source of control. Because it was. It's because the Catholic Church taught that only their elite can understand it and interpret it. And that's why over time the reading of the Bible was banned by the ordinary people. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13 says, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 says, knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. There is not one scripture that supports this catechism. Not one single person on earth has the say-so and dominance on Bible interpretation. If you are saved, a child of Elohim, then you have the Holy Spirit residing in you, and he will teach you. Not to say you can't be taught things by teachers, as that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. But for anyone to say that they are to be entrusted solely to interpret the word of Elohim is purely wicked. Let's keep going. The Catholic Church believes in the supremacy of the Pope. Catechism 882 on page 254 reads, The Pope, Bishop of Rome, and Peter's successor is the perpetual and visible source and foundation of the unity both of the bishops and of the whole company of the faithful. For the Roman Pontiff, by reason of his office as vicar of Christ and as pastor of the entire church, has full, supreme, and universal power over the whole church, a power which he can always exercise unhindered. And when you fall into modern-day religion, you're under that power. The Pope, just like all men, are wicked sinners, but yet they claim him to be the vicar of Christ. Vicar is a person who who acts in place of another, a substitute. So he believes he is a substitute for the Messiah on earth. That claim is blasphemous, and most people don't really understand that. Through these claims, he believes he is sinless and has complete power over the whole church, which is why the church went around conquering the world. You see, for power, it's easier to say you're doing things in the name of God rather than doing things in your own name or for your own power or definitely not in the name of Satan. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 says, And he, Yahusha, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Nowhere does it say that he is passing this title on down to man. It's blasphemy. You know, this subject could go on and on because there is no shortage of falsehoods and traditions that stem from the church. The reason why people are not the church, they're not the assembly, and the reason why they go to church is because of Rome. Understand, the reason why people feel that they must be attached to a church, even though they know there are falsehoods, is because of the Catholic doctrine, which is the foundation. Catechism 2177 through 2179 reads, The Sunday celebration of the Lord's Day and His Eucharist is at the heart of the church's life. Sunday is the day on which the Paschal ministry is celebrated in light of the apostolic tradition and is to be observed as the foremost holy day of the obligation in the universal church. Also to be observed are the day of the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, the epiphany, the ascension of Christ, the feast of the body and blood of Christ, the feast of Mary, the mother of God, her immaculate conception, her assumption, the feast of St. Joseph, the Feast of the Apostles, St. Peter and Paul, the Feast of All Saints. 2178. This practice of the Christian assembly dates from the beginning of the apostolic age. 
the letter to the Hebrews reminds the faithful not to neglect to meet together as is the habit of some, but to encourage one another. And that's where every one of you get that reasoning for what you do. You're just taking their doctrine and attaching yourself to it and believing how they interpret it. We're not to gather together in falsehoods and lies. That's not what the scripture is saying. But let's keep going. 2179. A parish is a definite community of the Christian faithful established on a basis within a particular church. The pastoral care of the parish is entrusted to a pastor as its own shepherd under the authority of the diocesan bishop. It is the place where all the faithful can be gathered together for the Sunday celebration of the Eucharist. The parish initiates the Christian people into the ordinary expression of the liturgical life. It gathers them together in this celebration. It teaches Christ's saving doctrine. It practices the charity of the Lord in good works and brotherly love. 2184. Just as God rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done, human life has a rhythm of work and rest. The institution of the Lord's day helps everyone enjoy adequate rest and leisure to cultivate their familial, cultural, social, and religious lives. I mean, this should be plain to see that most of the Christian church today has received their doctrine about going to church from the Roman Catholic foundation that was laid. And instead of breaking away, people use their indoctrinated lessons from the church to validate their actions. The point I am making to you is that if you're trying to get closer to Messiah and be ready for him, you must identify the falsehoods and deceptions. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18 urge us to note those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learn, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Adon Yahusha the Messiah, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. It's time that you recognize where your doctrines come from and why you do certain things. Let's be clear, for the most part, one-liners in scriptures are not justifications for full doctrine. The Hebrews had a culture and a way, and it is taught about many times in the scriptures. Yes, Yahusha brought clarity and explained many other things and showed us that it was all about what was in our heart, but he did not change the way of the Hebrews. The hijackers did, and this is why the Christian faith does not resemble the faith of the Hebrews at all. This is why the Christian faith does not observe most of the commands in the Old Testament. If you are a Christian, you have been directed by a foundation of the universal church, and you do not have to share all their doctrines and beliefs in order to be steered away from Yah. The universal church hijacked the authority and made themselves the holders of Yah's covenant, and they conquered the world through this false authority. This is a hijacker, and as we go through the other ones in history, you will find that this foundation laid by these hijackers is always in the background. So no matter how much you want to find reasoning to say you are not influenced by the Roman Catholic Church, a majority of the doctrines and movements that have moved away from this church are stained from the foundation. And that's why it's important for all of us to go back in the word and make the word our foundation and not the philosophies and traditions of men. It's time to identify doctrines that have been taught by our enemy and remove them and live a life of faith more intertwined with the scriptures and less intertwined with the traditions of men. The Roman Catholic Church, this is the first hijacker we will present and you will see through history their influence is massive. So we are far from done. Please take time daily and read the scriptures for yourself and align yourself with Yahuwah and drop all the false ideals and all the false traditions of men. I pray that you heed this advice and let Yah set you free. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Y'all willing, I upload every Friday. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to thank all who donate and contribute to this ministry. 
Your donations are truly a blessing to this ministry and they help very much. Thank you for your love and support and letting our Father use you. You are truly a blessing and I appreciate your support. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.